to present you the structural, uh, structurally consistent relative geological time model, also sometimes uh, called the relative geological time model or simply geo model. So let's see what's news in, uh, in this section. So just again to have a brief recap, I may, I know that most of you may know how Palace can work, but just for the recap, so every, everything in Palace can start with a process seismic and you can also input reference horizons, some faults if you have some again, or as, as we've seen before, you can use the uh, automatic fault extraction workflow of Palascan or create uh, the faults directly into the Palascan interface. Then once you're having your seismic uh, into the software, uh, the main step of Palascan is going to, uh, the main goal is going to interpret this seismic. And this goes through the model read, which is the framework for the interpretation to create the geo model. And past this, you're uh, outputting uh, different types of items, such as the horizons, horizon stacks, uh, some uh, attribute derived from the geo models or from other models. And you can also use, if you have some, some well data to QC your work before passing it on to the reservoir engineering uh, to go further in the process. Now what I'm going to introduce you is part of the model grid and uh, geo model stage uh, of the, the process of pair scan. So as you may know, again, uh, uh, traditionally in Palascan, we had two ways of creating a geo model. So we had the classic version, which used every horizon automatically propagated by the, the software, as well as the horizon uh, manually edited by the user. And we also had the marked only geo model that only accounted for the marked horizons, the horizons interpreted by the users only to, uh, to create the geometry of the model. So these have the advantage of uh, relying on only the most reliable reflectors to constrain the geometry of the model. But now we have got a new type of geo model, which is the marked only faulted model here. And we are taking into account the marked horizons, so only the one uh, marked and interpreted by the users, as well as the faults. These to be more structurally consistent, and this is where we're going to see. So just uh, to, uh, to let you know how it works before, so with a traditional marked only model, this is a seismic, so it's uh, from the Exmouth uh, Ex seismic, which is uh, uh, offshore northwest Australia, and you have some interpreted horizons. These are the horizons in color here in the map. So we're using these uh, marked horizons as constraints to build our marked only models. How does it work? We are taking into account the thickness relationship into, in between the, the marked horizons and also the geometry of the existing marked horizons to propagate the relationship of every horizons everywhere on the seismic. So I'm showing this on this slide, the example for three different horizons where we're picking up the, the relative thickness relationship in between the horizons and their uh, geometrical relationship to build any potential other horizons. But if virtually you're applying this everywhere vertically in the model, in the seismic, you're ending up with a synthetic model that looks like this one, which is the marked only geo model. So it's quite synthetic, it's quite nice, but still we're suffering from a few drawbacks. And in particular, we're having these uh, vertical jumps uh, where there are faults in Palestine. So this is kind of annoying and we wanted to improve this. So now in 2020, we are also able to account for the faults to structurally constrain the, this uh, type of synthetic model, the marked only weak fault model. And this is the type of model that we're ending up when we're accounting for the faults. So you see that we're still very synthetic, but on top of this, we are much more consistent in terms of uh, structural consistency. And in uh, bonus, I would say, we can, with this type of model, manage the stru uh, first structures. So in case of the compressive, compressive systems, you can uh, create some multi z geo models. And this is uh, brand new in Palascan. So if we're looking a bit closer at the outputs of these geo models, so here it's the raw output, and you can see the voxels of it. Here is what it looks like. But now if we're uh, using the faults themselves as discrete uh, discontinuities and playing with a bit of, a, uh, of a interpolation, of bilinear interpolation, we can recreate some very discrete uh, discontinuities at the location of the faults and we can uh, have discrete displacements along the faults. And on top of this, on this slide, you can see that we are managing the multi z relationship uh, of the horizons. So again, just to uh, show you the difference between the former marked only model and the new marked only with faults, this is a former method uh, that, you can, uh, that you can see here. We're not taking into account 
uh, structurally the, the faults. And this is what we get in 2020. And you see that uh, we can have some uh, discrete displacement of the fault uh, location on the fault surfaces. And on top of this, we can uh, handle the, uh, the, the reverse structures in here. And this is what has been circled in, in red. Last uh, thing I wanted to, uh, to say before uh, yielding the, the speech to Jean-Philippe again. Currently, we are not directly able to create some outputs uh, with multi z So we're not able to produce some multi z with overlaps of horizons, of horizon stacks, or use this multi z model directly uh, for second stratigraphy items. But uh, we are currently able to uh, convert this multi z model, in case they're uh, involving some overlaps, to uh, still be able to create these, uh, these items. So in Panascan, we're constantly uh, improving and developing. So we wanted uh, to make this new type of multi-z model available to you so that you can experience it. And of course, the multi-z objects are going to come soon. This is our plan. So uh, be patient for this and it's, it's, it's gonna be coming. So now I uh, leave speech to Jean-Philippe and, uh, and let, let's go for the live demo. So, thank you, Sven. Uh, okay, now the next presentation will be as Sven explained on the new uh, multi Z model, uh, will allow you to uh, insert into your relative logical time model some cross fault, uh, for example. Uh, for this demonstration, okay, I will just yeah, share my application. For uh, this presentation, I will use uh, the same data set, okay, I will still use. Um, the Australian data set. Okay, sorry, I removed the fault. And uh, first of all, before to create, as you know, a relative logical time model, okay, multi Z or traditional, or, uh, traditional uh, classic relative logical time model, we have to create what we call a model grid. Okay, if you just go under model grid, new model grid, and okay, we you have exactly the same interface as before. And uh, just a few comments before to present you um, the new feature for, uh, for the fault. Uh, first of all, for the data filtering in case of huge data and you want to understand. Uh, now, we don't have a spatial undersampling, but you have independent inline and cross-line undersampling like this. It's more flexible in terms of undersampling. For example, if you have none, uh, regular uh, bin, and you want to have a regular bin uh, between inline and cross line. And uh, just concerning the new feature, uh, we also implement new method for the vertical extension. On Padoscan 20, 20, uh, 2019, okay, you have the possibility to create the model grid just between two horizons. Now we have implemented more options, uh, Z limits. Okay, then min, then max, depth or time, depending the kind of data you have, or uh, from Z min to horizon, or from horizon to Z max. Like this, you have, again, more option, more flexibility to create your model grid on your interest area. Okay, because uh, in terms of computation time, this kind of thing, it can be long. Due to this, you have more flexibility. Now, if I come back to uh, the management of faults, uh, under the relative logical time model. First of all, for the model grid, we implement a new option. It's zero thickness option. And if I just go and I just click on, okay, I drag and drop the fold. For example, the one I extract from the previous presentation for the 2020 release. Okay, just two seconds to compute my preview. And then on the previous of release of PaleoScan, if you remember, we just drag and drop the fault. When we insert some fault into the model grid, we insert a gap between the faults for the node to avoid to write wrong connection. Now with this new option, even if I introduce the fault, I have constant model grid. We don't create any gap around the fault. We still use the fault to stop the automatic propagation to avoid wrong connection. For example, if I just activate an horizon, but okay, we have node almost everywhere and you can still interpret. And like this, it's much more easier to interpret 
up to the fault. Okay, we don't have limitation of this gap. If I just show you, okay, the previous uh, previous version. If I just toggle off this option and I just okay activate the grid. Okay, this is the new release, and this was the previous one where we insert some gap around the faults to avoid wrong connection. And like this, uh, like this, okay, for example, you see on this part where you have very high density of fault, it was very difficult to interpret, almost impossible because you don't have node. Now we have uh, more options to interpret. Of course, you can use this option not only for the new relative geological time model, but you can use for all your uh, uh, your RGT model. Okay, if you want, if you want to create relative geological time model uh, with all the horizon a, a normal classic relative geological time model, you can use this new model grid with this option of zero thickness fault. It's why why we toggle off toggle on by default like this. You have much more control and much more. Um, control to your interpretation. And for example, this was a model grid compute with this new method. Okay, I just organize my windows and I just activate the preview. As you can see, if I just zoom in, I have very constant grid with all my horizon interpret. Uh, first comment, uh, as explained, okay, as you can see, Parios can stop the propagation exactly on the fault, even if we don't insert. First thing, on the horizon map, we have much more cleaner map from the model grid compared to the other one without a big gap. For example, okay, if I just, just interpret on this part, you see we have better maps directly thanks to this method. And then we can use for any kind of model. Uh, I just interpret few horizons because as uh, the mark only option, this new relative geological time model, it's based on the mark horizon and on the fault. Okay, if I just toggle off the fault to have better view of my interpretation, okay, I just spend a few minutes just to interpret some key horizons. And then PaleoScan will take account this mark horizon and the fault. Okay, if I just play with the preview just to compare the different preview depending the method we use, okay, just the model. This is the medium quality preview with the um, with the classic relative geological time model, very useful in terms of exploration. You want a quick model, you don't want to mark many horizons and you want to take account all your seismic. This one, it was really useful. Now, if we take account only uh, the, mark on, uh, the mark horizons, as Sven explained, it's already synthetic model, very clean. But if I have a look on the fault, I still have some some effects on the fault and uh, some smooth effect and this kind of thing. Now, thanks to this new method, okay, it's just under the preview, we have mark only faulted like this. If I just took it on, it's a little bit longer because it's not only the mark horizon, but also the fault. I will just deactivate the fault from the preview. Paleos can take account the fault from the model grid I use for the zero thickness variation to create the structural model and propagate the horizon up to the fault. And like this, we have more structurally consistent horizons, much more clean horizon on the fault because we don't have this effect. And we have something cleaner than the previous option. And then, okay, this is just the preview to QC. Okay, as you know, you can QC and to know exactly what's happened into your interpretation uh, thanks to the preview. Now, if you want to compute, you can directly compute. Okay, we have a pull down menu for all the relative digital time model computation, classic geo model, the mark only, mark only with fault. And like this, you will obtain, okay, this, this is the final result you can obtain. Okay, I don't have trust fault on this data set, but as you can see, I have a very clean model, very synthetic. And then, okay, I, as then explained, it's not possible to use directly for uh, the output of PaleoScan for the moment. Okay, we have to convert this as a classic uh, relative digital time model. Okay, because unfortunately, our horizon stack, our sequence graphic model 
don't manage multi Z horizons for the moment, but you can use and them uh, like this. Padoscan will correct your RGT thanks to the fault, and you will have, even if you convert into non multi Z model, more uh, consistent, uh, structurally consistent relative logical time model. Okay. If you forget uh, to convert for the creation of horizon stack, okay, if I go under horizon stack, if you go on new horizon stack, you will have your multi-z model under horizon stack exactly as before. Okay, you can choose your seismic, the number of horizons. But before to create the horizon stack, Padoscan will convert to avoid to have multi-z horizon stack. Okay, it's exactly the same workflow if I convert prior uh, to the uh, horizon stack or if I forget and I don't want to uh, add another step, if I use directly for uh, the horizon stack. Thanks for uh, your attention. Uh, I let uh, Nicolas Denac for the next uh, presentation about the, the uh, latest update on 2D workflow. Thanks for, for your attention. <laughs>